This is Joe Biden. On Friday, October 28th, he gave a speech about his Build Back Better infrastructure plan and spoke about the importance of electric vehicles. First, we face, and I know I apologize for saying this again, we face, we face an inflection point as a nation. And we're off to a great start. For most of the 20th century, we led the world by a significant margin because we invested in our people. Not only in our roads and our highways and our bridges, but in our people and our families. We didn't just build an interstate highway system, we built a highway to the sky. What? We invested to win the space race and we won. Not sure what the space race has to do with investing in people, but <laughs> whatever, Joe. We'll build out the first ever national network of 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations all across the country. No, they won't. In April 2021, a fact sheet about plans to advance electric vehicle charging infrastructure stated the following. Biden's American Jobs Plan includes a transformational $15 billion investment to fund this vision and build a national network of 500,000 charging stations. However, the final version of the infrastructure bill that Biden signed only allocates $7.5 billion. So, even though the Biden administration only got half of the money that they asked for, they're still going to build out the same amount of charging stations. Yep, that's Democrat math for you. Now, to be clear, the government isn't building this national network of charging stations. In fact, it's hardly a national network. The federal government is giving out grants to states, and then the states will shell out this money to private companies, and then those private companies will build the charging stations. Now, you might have gotten ahead of me and figured out that $7.5 billion divided by 500,000 charging stations only leaves $15,000 per station. And you might be asking, how is 15 grand going to build a charging station, let alone anything? Well, first, it might help to define what charging station actually means. Look at this image. It contains several chargers. This is probably what you think of when you hear the term charging station. However, a location only containing one charger that can only charge one vehicle at a time can also be designated as a charging station. And it doesn't help that Joe Biden compares charging stations to gas stations. And by the way, parenthetically, when you build a charging station, it's like back in the day when my grandpa worked for the Merrill Canola Company back in the turn of the, in the 19, 1920 in that area. They went from state to state convincing people that they put, allowed them to put 20,000 gallons of gasoline under the ground. They didn't want them around. But guess what happened? Everything builds up around them. So back in the 1920s or whenever, Biden's grandpa worked for a private company who wanted to build gas stations. What does this have to do with the federal government giving small grants to private businesses to build charging stations? The answer, not much. Brandon just really loves to tell stories. You can go all the way across America on a single tank of gas, figuratively speaking. It's not gas, you plug it in. 81 million votes, guys. Now, most people will not be traveling across America in their electric vehicle. But for the ones that try, it's gonna be a very inconvenient trip. First, that car needs to have a long range and be compatible with direct current fast charging so that you can fill up your battery relatively quick. So let's say that you're going on a road trip in your electric car that has a range of 250 miles. If you average 60 miles an hour on the highway, you're gonna have to pull over and charge your car's battery well within a four hour period and then sit there while your battery recharges, which could take up to an hour to get to an 80% charge. And these charging stations along the highway will need to have dozens, if not hundreds of chargers at the ready, because otherwise people could have to sit and wait in line to sit and wait for their car to charge. Furthermore, direct current fast chargers can cost as much as $140,000 and that doesn't include installation, which will cost anywhere from 17,000 to nearly 66,000 per charger, depending on how many are being installed at once. In other words, that $15,000 in government spending per station is a joke. 
Speaking of jokes, here's the former governor of Michigan, Jennifer Granholm. Let me cut to it if I may. In Sturgis, Michigan, it is $2.89 a gallon. I guess that's better than in California. What is the Granholm plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. And since Jennifer Granholm is the current United States Secretary of Energy, her reaction should be disqualifying. Here's the Biden plan. I'm here at Glasgow. The Biden plan is to diversify and to make sure that we move in a direction of clean energy where we're not reliant upon cartels and we're not reliant upon geopolitical adversaries who may be um, creating choke points for our mm -hmm. ability and our people to be able to access energies. So they want to diversify. But in the meantime, we still need oil and gas because we're not, nor may never be, a clean energy economy. And because of their unrealistic energy policy, we're now relying on Russia and OPEC, our geopolitical adversaries, for our energy supply. And that puts our national security at risk. Thanks, Brandon. During the 2020 campaign, Joe painted a very clear picture on what energy policy would look like in a Biden White House. Number one. No more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Number one. What about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. new pipeline infrastructure? Yes. And, new pipeline. And, and, exactly. and, and so, it shouldn't have been a surprise that the first thing Biden did when he entered office was to sign an executive order canceling the Keystone XL oil pipeline and suspend the sale of oil and gas leases on federal lands. Lands where the US gets 10% of its supply. And even though Biden is aggressively trying to sabotage energy production in the United States, for some reason, everyone is just shocked at the high price of fuel. How did that happen? All right, gas prices continue to skyrocket in some areas of California. It's more than $5 a gallon. What we're seeing here in Los Angeles is $5.99 a gallon. That's for regular unleaded. Pump prices up 60% in a year. Natural gas up 130%. Heating oil up 59%. Right now, as a country, we're spending $600 million more per day on gas compared to last year. And with gas prices currently at the highest they have been in years, now seems like a great time for the Brandon administration to promote their green energy agenda. You could uh, buy one of these electric vehicles and never have to worry about gas prices again. So the problem is that people can barely afford to buy gasoline. And the solution is to buy a $40,000 electric car. Wait a second. Oh my God. I think he just solved the energy crisis. Of course, what he isn't considering is that electric vehicles are not an option for millions and millions of Americans who don't have a garage or driveway where they can charge their vehicle at home, especially in large cities. Unless he thinks that people are just gonna take extension cords and hang them out of their windows or something, I don't know. And the cost of charging your car at public charging stations will rise and fall depending on the state of the economy, the location, the overhead involved in maintaining the chargers, and of course, the price of electricity itself. But none of that matters, because the Biden administration is all in on electric vehicles. In August 2021, Biden signed an executive order that sets a non-binding goal that by 2030, new passenger cars and light trucks will be zero emission vehicles. And the Build Back Better scam, which is currently held up in Congress, offers incentives to electric car buyers. You think about what it would mean to American families uh, who are looking at these electric vehicles coming on the market to get that discount of up to $12,500. This is misleading because you're not getting a discount. You're getting a tax credit. Maybe. The way the tax credit would work is as follows. You would get $7,500 back for the purchase of your electric vehicle. If the battery is made in the US, you get $500 back. If the vehicle is union made here in the US, you get an additional $4,500 back. And that last bit about being union made is the most controversial. Congressman Dan Kildee and Senator Debbie Stabenow wrote that provision in collaboration with the United States Auto Workers Union and General Motors because they, like Joe Biden, 
are in bed with the unions. And Dan and Debbie are responsible for the additional tax credit of $4,500 for union-made vehicles. And that means if you buy an electric vehicle from Tesla, which is made here right in America, but it's not a union shop, you won't get that $4,500 credit because it's not about saving the environment. It's about Joe Biden kowtowing to the unions and making it political. Biden held this uh, EV summit. Um, didn't invite Tesla. They invited um, GM, Ford, Chrysler, and UAW. Didn't mention Tesla once and praised GM and Ford for leading the EV re revolution. <laughs> And the meme lord has a point. Tesla, an American company, currently dominates the EV market. According to Experian Automotive, from January to June 2021, Tesla vehicles made up 66.3% of all new electric vehicle registrations in the United States. It's not the friendliest administration. It seems to be controlled by the unions, as far as I can tell. Yeah, seems to be. And finally, Joe Biden, while touting the so-called benefits of buying electric vehicles under his Build Back Better plan, gets basic facts wrong about the tax rebates. New loans and new tax credits, creating new purchase incentives for consumers to buy American-made, union-made clean vehicles, <clears throat> like the electric Hummer. Fact check false, Brandon. The Build Back Better bill contains a manufacturer suggested retail price limitation. The purchase price of the 2023 Hummer EV pickup and SUV is estimated to cost $100,000. The MSRP limitation in the bill is $69,000 for SUVs and $74,000 for pickups. Therefore, a $100,000 Hummer is not eligible for a federal rebate of any kind. And of course he got it wrong. He gets everything wrong. And he can make outrageous claims about receiving tax credits on a luxury electric vehicle that no one actually needs and no one in the media bothers to question it. Because of course not. Anyway, that's it for now. Please like, share, and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to check out my Let's Go Brandon merch in the description. Thanks to Poofy for her help with this week's script and thank you for tuning in. And as always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time. I love that video. Thank you.